Houndour, calm down. <laughs> oh wait, Houndour is allowed. Houndour is el eligible. Because mm -hmm. that dark typing. God, that's yeah. Just, that just don't get it on waters. Welcome everybody to the Pokey Battle Network. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Rainstorm Cup with our how to build our first look on looking at this meta with wonderful battlers from around the world. Today we've got Brown Baller joining us as our usual co-host of these wonderful how to build. But we have someone special, someone thrifty, someone real nifty, and that is JRE Seawolf. And I am so happy to have you on here. How Welcome JRE, how are you doing today? Uh, thank you very much. I'm doing well. Uh, it, it's been a while since I got to do one of these. I don't think I've been on one of these since, God, back in the self days. So, um, happy to be part of it. Thank you for having me and, uh, looking forward to another cool meta. Ah, looking forward to having another cool meta indeed. Brown Baller. We've done so many, two metas so far. We're on meta number three on the four meta season so far. How you liking this? It's a lot of fun. I'm glad to see individual back. It definitely, it feels like something we needed. It, that that gap of not having Sylph was definitely, it was definitely not a great place for the game. But now Devin has really been able to fill that gap and really find a way to really bring back the individual format and you know the, that competitive level to really help people learn how to play Show Six as they you know could take that to the next level of you know potentially Devon World, just helping with the play Pokemon circuit to help people, you know, qualify for the play Pokemon World Championships. Because Show 6 is a completely different animal than GBL, for sure. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. No, it, it's been wonderful to get this back, this this individual, not the same six Pokemon or 12 Pokemon you see playing in metas until the season shifts after GBL. Like they tell us you have these specific Pokemon or these specific typings or this specific Pokemon and we get to play and map out great teams. And Devin Corpse has given us some amazing game styles this last meta. These have done four months now. JRE, I want to know, you've done some good thrifty and nifties on these metas in these past few metas. How have you felt about them? Uh, they've all looked fun and exciting and mm -hmm. and like brown baller was saying uh, that period where we didn't have this for several months that that hurt um it, it's so different than gbl having the the team of six as opposed to just the three i love formats like this i, I missed it when it was gone happy to have it back and devin's done a, done a great job of coming out up with some really exciting ones um mm -hmm. i know sylph even near the end was uh, expressing that you know it's hard to come up with new metas after a while and something new and exciting and and Devon has, has done a great job of that you want GBL's metas to be better but they don't put these special bands out there or they don't like really get down to the nitty-gritty yep. um and then somehow it like gets real blind stale having that idea to see the Pokemon is huge in these show six yep <laughs> And a lot of the stuff, I mean, there's probably a lot of similarities, you know, to some of these cups that we also see in GBL as well. Because you're starting to see, they are starting to include. So, I mean, what was the cup we had recently? It was... Zodiac? Spring Cup. Oh, sorry, in GBL. Was Spring oh. Cup. Yeah. Where it was ice, grass, and water. Yeah. Um, And they actually had banned Mantine. Yep. And I was like... Man, I really wish Mantine was unbanned, but it had also been very strong as well, which I'm assuming it would be very strong in this meta as well, because you can see it's it's banned. Because typically they ban the strong Pokemon because the meta development team does a lot of really good work in, you know, testing these metas to see, you know, what do we actually need to ban in these formats? Because sometimes without the bans, there's some Pokemon that can just get loose and uh, be problems in this meta. Right. Now, I, I agree, you, you, you look at them and you're like, what is this ban about? And then you're like, well, wait a minute. If this ban is not taken out, then all of these Pokemon all up and down the field are taken out. And that just complete, pushes the meta to just like three or four Pokemon. So the mm -hmm. developers have done such a great job. I have not felt any staleness in any of the metas. Have you gentlemen mm -hmm. felt any staleness in the last metas with the developing or no? like near the end has it been like because we all get really excited we get new metas we love to create teams but then near the end uh did you feel like they get stale 
Not in particular. I will say the only thing of water types is they do have the ability to have Scald. Um, and as you, we all saw when I was on Flash for everyone, uh, I got debuffed a lot by Scald. So um, <laughs> what Pokemon have Scald in them is real curious for me because uh, uh, I don't like getting debuffed. And I'm really good at getting debuffed. Um, so we'll see what Pokemon have Scald in this meta or other debuff moves that well, aren't 100% guarantees. Be glad there's no Wish Cash in this meta then. I am very glad Wish Cash is banned. <laughs> <laughs> Sosa could definitely confirm that. He's, he got to watch that firsthand. It was so bad. I was like, is this Enhoff luck? What is happening here? It was like a 92% chance. Yes, a 92% chance that he was getting procced on. But yes, Wish Cash is banned in the new meta, the Rainstorm. Thank you, gentlemen, on your discussion on these past metas is we have our new one for april it is dark water and flying and the band types are fighting electric and fairy it is real simple a meta where the last three metas have been like very nitpicky very you know tactical build this has gone back to a very simple way of battling in sylph and in team building gentlemen how do you feel about the bands the the typing i can understand because those are pretty really strong typings but those bands there are probably one of the the big key in the typing for this meta here and i want to know what you both feel about that yeah, so just my, my first thing I noticed was with uh, Electric being out, how important it is that Skarmory and Celestia, uh, Celestia, sorry, are mm. banned. What would hit them hard without Electric in the meta? Uh, practically right. nothing. nothing. And especially with, you know, the, the steel uh, wing that Skarmory runs off of now, it can just bust through most everything. So... Um, very happy to see those two banned because dealing with those in this meta with, with, with electric being out, that would be tough. Yeah. And also to kind of go off of that, you see the fighting type band as well, which really opens fighting and fairy type band, which yep. really opens up the ability for dark to be this neutral safe swap scenario. Uh, save lie is one of the most iconic safe swaps in this game, but you know, with dark types being, you know, potentially a one in three chance your opponent has one just based on a team comp. It doesn't do that well into the darks. It'll do very well into the waters and the flying. So it's basically going to be really see what darks that can beat the darks. Uh, I think it's going to have a lot of play in here, especially in terms of safety. Because, I mean, real dominant um, when you take out the fighting and uh, fairy typing, I was like, oh my God, dark is going to, it's so neutral. It's not, it's not going to do anything to itself. It's just going to tank and soak everything up. And you look at some of those bands and Obstagoon is banned. They're taking out another uh, fighter as well. That counter user that would have put so much pressure down on all those Pokemon. And now with the boosted cross chop as well, put a little extra neutral damage down on those waters. Obstagoon could have gone wild in ham here. Um, um, I, I noticed there is a ban on Wishcash and on Toxapex. And the first thing I thought when I saw Wishcash ban was here comes Swampert and Quagsire. The first thing those two. But then I saw Toxapex ban and I went, here comes Tentacruel. And I was like, well, why ban Wishcash if it's the Scald? And not Tentacruel if the Scald, but why ban Toxapex for a Poison Tank Water, which has Scald, which doesn't have Scald, but not ban Tentacruel, which is almost like a Poison Water Whiskash. I'm like baffled at this choice here. And I maybe, maybe you guys might know the macro better than I can, but why did Tentacruel and Swampert and Quagsire make it through? But Toxapex and Wishcash, not personal feelings aside, Brown Baller, all personal feelings aside. But why did those two well, make it through? Great question there. I think I, I can have a pretty good answer for Toxapex. Toxapex is just such a bulk tank that it can base it's a water Bastiodon. People really don't like playing against Bastiodon in show six. I like Bastiodon. I know I'm in the, the minority on that one. Uh, people really like it banned. I'm like, oh, we don't ever have a Bastiodon meta in my... Uh, question, response was one time just play gbl <laughs> i'm like okay <laughs> um so uh, devin apparently will not be creating a uh, bastion on that anytime soon i'm assuming as much as i'd love to have one but um <laughs> yeah typically pokemon like that that can be just very dominant and just a, a win kind of it's just in the back and you win is typically banned in these limited formats Wizcash is definitely interesting 
Uh, it's probably just because it's just a high usage bond just in general, not necessarily out of just overall strength. Also just the Skull debuff. Um, I'm assuming since Niantic didn't nerf Scald, uh, Devin was pretty okay with the nerfing was cashier just by banning it. Uh, I think there may be a little bit of a, there may be more stats behind it, but it may be more of just a over usage Pokemon issue here. Uh, before we get into our cores, our, our, you know, our Pokemon, what was the first Pokemon you thought of? What popped in your head was like, oh, I know that this Pokemon's gonna run wild. But I'm gonna say Empoleon. Okay. Yeah. Um, just because with the Steel Wing buff, yes, that's not great against the waters here, but it's just so much more exciting in Great League now than, than it ever was before. And it's it, it's been loads of fun to play in uh, GBL and other formats. And just to see if it could open things up here with its good variety of moves, with resisting that flying damage, it could, uh, in my mind, without even looking at the meta, I figured this thing might be able to stand up to just about everything here. Yeah. And you know I always like the thrifty pick, so being right. a 10k doesn't hurt. Hence why I gotta ask. That is a great thrifty pick. It saves you on energy. And, I mean, if you got a Shadow Empoleon, great for you. Uh, during that one small period of time. If you didn't, all right, a regular Polyon with that Steel Wing now is boosted. So that's a great, wonderful pick, wonderful pick. I mean, I saw Mantine Band. I saw Water. I saw Fly. I'm like, Pelipper. Pelipper also with yeah. Electric. Mm -hmm. uh, I, th I don't know if it would be considered Spice, but I think just overall, just a solid hampering of damage. How will it do in the Water types? I think it will do generally good still. I mean, obviously, Weather Ball's resisted, but... Um, it's, it's definitely one that I came to my mind, especially you seeing a double, res it's double weakness is electric and having that electric just banned in general, just I felt it was strong. And I actually had a second one as well. Um, the one Pokemon that came to mind was mentioning Rainstorm, Rainy Cast form, access to Thunder. Yes. Right. But it's I just, how it. is that water gun damage going to play out into right? water types? and? other stuff i think it could definitely have a lot of play but if you're hitting one third of pokemon for you know more resistant than typically anything it will add up over time but it's going to be you know what water type pokemon can get away with a non-water type fast move to be able to damage those water types efficiently what well, I, I haven't looked at it in detail yet but keep in mind rainy cast form also has tackle Ooh. same stats as water gun What's and it we, gonna be resisted by? Practically nothing. We love Just our tackle ball. from Sovereign Cup. So yeah. that is, that's nice. Those are absolutely amazing picks there. And Polion, when you see it, it's right now in Polion water with the hydro and the drill run, super fun to play with. Yeah. Um, uh, and for sure, like Pelipper, when you see flying and like half of it's banned, like half of it's uh, counters are banned, right? You're like, oh, Pelipper, such a spam Pokemon, why not? It's got yeah. that nuke potential. Uh, when I saw this, I thought, because I saw Whiskash go down, I was like, Swampert, Quagsire, like I'm thinking Mud Boys are coming up, Water's here. I went, I went crazy. I went with Ludicolo with Razor Leaf thinking that Ludicolo, because they just keep dumping so many charge moves into it, that it yeah. has to be useful at some point, at some point. It's, it's um, like the water version of uh, Claydol. Right, you're like, come on. <laughs> Ugh. But it, it might, I might be leaning more towards either a Jump Pluff or a Tropius there because of that grass typing. What, we were talking about what's gonna hit some of these Pokemon and grass typing is so good. Jump Pluff, one of the few that has that fairy um, to hit the, the dark and the grass to hit the water. Like, I was like, ooh, Jump Pluff could be yeah. real sneaky in this meta. It may lead to a little bit of RPS depending upon what your team comp is, but mm -hmm. it just, I think it's really gonna depend upon how the meta shakes out. You know, those can be those attack Pokemon to go for those typings, which I think, again, goes back to what I was saying before with the dark typing being a very neutral typing just in general. Yeah. Um, and if I, if I could throw one more, since you were asking Spice specifically, absolutely. I have one more in mind. Seeking. Oh! I've been encouraging use of Seeking for years, all the way back to the early days of Sylph. 
what's gonna resist that set of moves? Now you need the triple legacy, obviously, but you got, you know, ice for the flyers, and then you've got drill run and poison jab for basically everything else. There's no steel here that you have to worry mm -hmm. about uh, resisting the poison jab. Grass, like you said, is probably gonna show up where it's available just because so many waters, poison jab hits those. Yeah, and something that ice, here. grass could show up in something that ice could even hit it for more damage. We didn't talk about them, but dragons are going to be around. There are flying type dragons, there are dark type dragons. There are even water type dragons. So I yeah. with no with no fairy around, do you guys feel like dragons might make a play in this meta? Yes. Yes. Yeah. yeah mm -hmm. I, I think it's certainly possible. I mean, flying obviously hits them for neutral. Dark does as well, but there's gonna be a lot of water here. Um, like you pointed out earlier, grass, people are gonna try and bring, and of course dragon resists all of that. So yeah. I can absolutely yeah. see that. Awesome. Yeah, I mean, Kingdra though, uh, I don't love it as much in Great League. I can't remember if it's ever actually been viable in uh, limited meta formats. You guys probably have a little bit more experience with me. In Timeless that Cup. <laughs> was that so, during? Was that pre-COVID? Or that was twenty nine December twenty nineteen. We had uh, an LA really. Mega, and that was when they gave it Octazuka, and Octazuka was acting like Skull is now, where it was yes. going off like crazy. <laughs> Wasn't yep. hitting hard, but it was procking. You're like, yeah, attack actually fell. And then they really adjusted it properly, and you're like, why isn't my Octazuka working? And, yeah, it know, was. Speaking of Octazuka, there's actually. There's another Octazuka mod in this meta. I don't know if it's going to be good. Is that going to stop people from running it? Why no. not? No, you know that artillery? is. Is it the uh, octopus? Artillery. Oct artillery. Yeah. Spice Lords coming at us with artillery. Why would artillery be good? What does artillery have, sir, that would make it fun? Well, since Registeel's banned, it's got luck on. Yeah, that's true. It's got luck Super on. Spam. Lock on Octazuka Gunk Shot with other moves yep. like Acid Spray, Aurora Beam, and Water Pulse. Not to mention, it has Mud Shot and Water or, and Water Gun too. So, mm -hmm. Attack Stat 132, Defense 103, Stamina 123. You might be onto something here, sir. <laughs> you might be onto something. That's a great... Great Pokemon there. These are wonderful Spice Pokemon as the Rainstorm Cup is coming at us for April. Really excited. But we're going to get down now to the core Pokemon that we think you should be looking at maybe building around. Or the two Pokemon that we think you should have on your team that's going to help carry you for your championship tournament run. So let's go head down now and see what our picks are. So my... First pick of the Rainstorm Cup is going to be Guzzlord. We are talking about the tankiest of tankies when we look at darks, and Guzzlord has it all. Guzzlord has 265 health. That is a lot of health. Now, the defense is at 63, but... Here's where Guzzlord shines. It's got that dragon tail, which crunches down. Dragon claw, it's got crunch as well. It, in the zero shields out of the meta, it takes 18 out of the uh, out of the 30 that are top meta in this Rainstorm Cup. In the one shields, it takes 20 out of the top 10. And most of those are Pelipper, Quagsire, Barbarical, Umbreon, Empoleon, or not Empoleon, um, other dragons like this thing slaps most of this meta if you put it into pv poke you're just gonna see a line of purple with like a couple of blue dots it is so good if you have one the accessibility of guzzlord though is real difficult since not a lot of them are around 1500 and you have to make trades yeah i mean for me i actually don't have guzzlord built yet uh for two reasons mm -hmm. um well, first on the ones that are raid IVs, uh, they have not got under 1500 CP, mm -hmm. but the ones that are field research that we traded for, 
Those ones are all fantastic IVs of 1500. Hey! <laughs> I will win C if I build Guzzler, I will win CMP over every single person I face. <laughs> uh so uh I'm still so waiting on a better one, but uh yeah, I, I think the IVs are gonna create some really interesting scenarios for Guzzlord. Uh you may find just random breakpoints having on your Guzzlord. Or if you're, you know, you're lucky, you know, you may find a bulk point. But yeah, mine will have every single breakpoint found against it. But I will find every single breakpoint that exists. Yeah, so I also do not have a Guzzlord built. And again, it's because of IVs. I just don't have one worth building for Great League. Um, but yeah, I, I have faced them several times in the past. It is deceptively tanky. In fact, the first time I ever wrote about it when it was first released, I was like, this thing isn't going anywhere. Look, it's got atrocious defense. Who cares about the HP whenever he hits, you know, crushing you? Yeah. And yeah, I, I was dead wrong. The, the next couple times I actually faced one in battle, I was like, oh, crap. All right, I got to retract that one. <laughs> it's, it, is, no. it is fast, and the resistance it has as well um really can uh make, make a big difference where other dragons don't have that advantage so i like it a lot good pick i agree it, it could be interesting here yeah and again with fairies being out not really worried about a charming which would have destroyed right. this takiness and i think that's why you kind of neglected it too because this was on the rise. it came out on the rise of nine tails a little bit nine tails when that thing was hot and you don't want to see a little bit nine tails against this 265 health because that nine tails will chew you up and spit you out and you'll just sit there like ah. yep. yeah i'm also curious to see how uh I don't know if we'll be mentioning it, but Zwilus will be playing. That should be eligible too, shouldn't it? It should be eligible, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I guess if you, if, you know, is Zwilus a healthy alternative to Guzzlord in terms of accessibility? Or, you know, do you need that Guzzlord with the dragon moves? Because, I mean, fairies are banned. So, I mean, is that going to have any impact on anything? Uh, I'm... Probably it will have some positive impacts on it, but, you know, we'll have to, you know, see how it does turn out. I'm going to say yes. I, I'm I feel say, like I'm going to say you can interchange because mm -hmm. the the HP is nice, but with right. uh, with uh, Zwilos, you get that defense back mm -hmm. and you got Dragon Breath, where mm -hmm. Guzzlord really relies on that Dragon Tail chunk. You, It's a different play style with that yeah. Zwilos now than it is with that. And Zwilos isn't that further down on the PV poke rankings than yeah. this Guzzlord. So... Uh I would say if you don't have a Guzzlord, maybe the Zwilos might be what you need for your team. Right. And I wonder how many teams will actually have double Dark Dragons as well. Yeah, you could. Primarina will tear everyone apart! Except <laughs> that fairies are banned. Yeah. For, yeah you, oh, it yeah. is water... Wait, what's the second oh, evolution? You could run the middle oh, one. Though. Yeah, what's oh, the second can. one? Uh, pop... Papalino, Paparino. Prion, isn't it? Prion. Pri yeah, Prion. That's a pure water type. Let's yeah. see. Does Prion have? Sure, it does. Is it yeah, I? Is nice. it P R I O? And How disarming you... voice. Yeah, it's like Brioni, I think. Yeah, B B R I O. Oh, B R I. I'm with a P. Yes, it does. Yeah. Charming, charming, charm, disarming voice, and the newly buffed water pulse. Yep. So it could, and like, first things it beats, Hardwall Greninja, Hardwall Zylos, Hardwall Guzzlord, Hardwall Moltres Galarian, Hardwall, or beats Dugong. Like, Brino could be fun if uh, pure water and you need that charm. Um, but yes, that's the Guzzlord take there. So I already gave it away earlier. It's Empoleon. Um, so that was my first guess when I first saw the meta. I was like, mm -hmm. I got to check this one out. And lo and behold, it does indeed look pretty scary. Um, you got here, unlike Guzzlord, of course, you have the option of a shadow version as well, which is a different twist. Um, obviously it's going to be taking more damage, but it's also dishing more out. So, uh, I, I didn't see a ton of big differences between them although i think i'm slightly leaning towards shadow because it can take out does lord it can take out uh yeah. wall rain and pelipper and things that normal empoleon struggles a little bit more with so 
Obviously, a lot here are going to be the drill pack, even more than the hydro cannon, just because there's so much that resists the hydro. But with the moves that it has now, the speed that it has, the variety it has, I mean, what in this meta resists everything on there? I, I can't think of anything that resists all of its moves. You're going to hit something for, for decent damage eventually. Um, so I, I just like the, the way it looks. Um, I like the fact that it's cheap. Um, you, you know, you talked about at the intro of, of the, the video here, um, things you can build for the future. Uh, I mean, that, that's a great thing about formats like this. You, it, there's rarely something you just build for now that you'll never get use out of again. Whereas in GBL, you know, some of those formats, yeah, I build it for this one specific one week meta and then it goes in the dustbin. So yeah. Empoleon is something you're definitely going to want using uh, moving forward. Um, we have, if you recall, uh, a, a shadow event coming, I think, in just like a week or two. Mm -hmm. So those that have a, a shadow one that they weren't able to get frustration off of, you'll have a chance during this format to get yourself a shadow Empoleon. Um, I, I just think there's a lot going for it, and I think there's probably never been a better time to try and build one for Great League specifically. It was always a star in Ultra League with, what else? Double Dragon. Here we're talking about, you know, dragons. You can do that same thing here. Get, get your maybe Guzzlord and Zwilus out with Empoleon. What's going to go up against that? And, and farewell. I can't think of much. So I just like it a lot. I always look at the cheap picks, and this one just seems like a superstar in this format to me. Yeah. Also, you can have this, you know, if you don't have one built for Ultra League, and it may not be, you know, the perfect IVs for Great League, if it has good enough IVs for Ultra League, you can be a pre-investment for your future Ultra League in Polyon yep. as well. Also, it's 10k, that's the double move, so very cheap overall. You do have to use a high uh, Elite TM for a Hydro Cannon, but mm -hmm. actually, there is one on my bond I can think that actually resists all of Empoleon's moves. You have to, you have to realize what that one is, Jerry? Well, Empoleon. Empoleon itself. <laughs> that's right. And Polion itself is actually able to resist all of its moves. So, I mean, that's, I mean, telling right there. Yep. But if you can't beat it, join it. Right. Oh. So, so maybe even, like you said, if you're building one for Ultra League, maybe go with one with slightly more attack so that you mm -hmm. win those mirror matches. Yeah. Uh, that is a great pick. Since the Steel Wing, and Polion's just been super fun. I've been running it on Shadow because I was lucky enough to have a Shadow 1 viable uh, during that last Team Rocket event. And it is just what you wanted it to be now i'm i'm loving it that these hydro cannon users are coming out now more and more are coming out it's no longer just uh swamper and you know that has hydro cannon it's hisuian uh samurott regular samurott with fury cutter and polion now getting that steel wing with hydro cannon these things are coming out huge and in this meta even if you do like it's so good like you just said oh you can run double dragon we're like well wait pre-owned we just talked about pre pre-owned doesn't want to see this pokemon either nope absolutely so, not it's a great great pokemon there absolutely for all the battlers who are thrifty and nifty there perfect yep. beautiful beautiful choice sir well done well when you want to have stats you go as bulky as you can you know guzzlord's got the hp but this pokemon's got the defense it's umbreon umbreon definitely is something i have carried before quite uh, it took me to world so i mean i i'm a believer in it i love umbreon it's just so so neutral and i mean honestly into the darks it's not gonna be as great but it's really gonna come down to what darks are able to emerge i mean you you're just so bulky that the matchups aren't terrible um you can really just play up and stall out switch timer you can do many different formats uh play styles it really you're able to customize it to how you want to play it it does require an elite tm to get last resort but it is so bulky and it'll play into the waters and the flyers so well no it's i mean you think of dark you immediately first think of umbreon that is yep. like the first dark you think of. Can Umbreon mm -hmm. play? Absolutely. This is this is the lick -a tongue of this meta, I think. I think you are 100% mm -hmm. right. This will be the safest swap for you. This will be like a double of Zodiac Cup. You'll feel so good either putting it in as a safe swap or closing it in the back. But it is so 
Oh, long and boring. <laughs> oh, the, the, my favorite part, though, is the Umbreon mirror. No, God! <laughs> You mean the the Toronto the Toronto matchup? Yeah, that's yeah, the I, only I, thing I see now is just think of that Toronto matchup. I'm just like you know what what do people not want me to do? They don't want me to go to the Umbra Mirror. I make it as I make it as fun as possible. <laughs> no, that is wonderful. And you, if you know what you're doing on Umbreon Mirror and have a team ready to go to back you up for the rest of it, chip up a little extra energy off mm -hmm. the Umbreon later, get yourself a little, you know, steel wing action there so you have your uh, Hydra Cannon faster, get a Dragon Tail through so you can get to that Dragon Claw. Beautiful. Umbreon is fantastic. A wonderful first set of Pokemon, two darks and a uh, water, no flying. How are you guys feeling about these three Pokemon here? Yeah, agreed. Yep, yeah. yeah, agreed. Fully agreed. One thing I'm seeing is we're all weak to counter. Fighters are banned, so it'll be curious to see, you know, can anything get any fast move pressure from fighting type or fighting? So, I mean, like, man, will something like a cross chop Golduck be able to make its way into the meta? I mean, it's got a lot of fast move pressure and mm -hmm. it's got a fighting move. It's Shadow Dragonite. But uh, you, you can also play non Shadow as well. I, I think Shadow is going to be better here because it's just Shadow Dragon Breath pressure is just so strong. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if a Pokemon doesn't have fast move pressure on it, that dragon is going to be able to shield through it and really power through. So, I mean, it's going to be a strong Pokemon. So, I'm very curious to see how well it works out. It's gonna play very similar to the Guzzlord, just without the dark typing. It will have the flying typing. So it'll have a lot of the very, it'll have similar, but different, you know, uh, matchups there. So trying to take the best advantage of it as you can. That's a great, great pick right there. And we were just talking about that finding, finding fighting move, fighting a fighting move or a fairy move. And you found it. You found yeah. one right there. Yeah. And with that Dragon Breath too. And we was so dominant in Zodiac Cup as well. Yeah, that's a great pick. Great pick. Um, yeah, uh, any thoughts on it, JRE, or not? Yeah. No, uh, th th there are very few things here with, with fighting damage at all. I've, mm -hmm. I always love Dragonite, but especially since it got Superpower a while back, that was the, the, the missing thing it needed, was just that second move to mm -hmm. apply some pressure. I love it in, I mean, obviously it's, it's flimsy in Great League, but, but like Brown Baller said, the amount of damage it puts out, even as it goes down, is just nuts. Yeah. So I, I like that a lot. Yeah. You could probably build up to two superpowers uh, without even giving up a shield onto an Umbreon and then throw those in dip and still put up that amount yeah. of pressure at the yep. end of the matchup. It's great. Yeah. Game. Wonderful. Just watch out. Just watch out for Brion. The the terror of. Uh, Are we really putting Brion out there? Is that what we're doing? We're putting this off. <laughs> Brion I mean, is coming, everybody. I mean, while we've been talking about doing this battle, I've been looking at my Pokemon and uh, looking at the IVs on my uh, potential Brions. So, uh, I'm not gonna lie, I am definitely looking at it. But I mean, the biggest thing is that is that all these dragons, I'm. I'm not really mentioning the ice types. Mm -mm. And the more I'm yeah. thinking about it, I really think these ice types might have a lot more play than I was originally thinking. You might not be mentioning the ice types, but I certainly did not forget about the main ice type that was... This is what I love about these typing metas. You see the three typings, water, normal, or water, uh, dark, and flying. And you're like, okay. Then you see that their, their counters are banned. And you're like, oh, they're going to go wild. They're going to go neutral. And then you start building things and you're like, oh, wait a minute. I need to find this grass. I need to find this fairy typing mm -hmm. or a fighting typing move in there. And then you realize there are water rock Pokemon. There are grass water Pokemon, flying, uh, flying grass Pokemon, flying dragon Pokemon out there that have those types of moves that provide that. And just, it's so um like i can't wait to see what people bring out because it's so the it, again the ban that's why i said i wanted to ask that question with you guys about banning those typings because it is so like hard against those three types like now you really have to dig down and yeah. find that matchup or that neutral play that you really want to play 
Also, now I guess the more we're going through this video, I'm thinking about Wizcash. It has access to Blizzard. I feel like that definitely had a lot of play. Oh, yeah, that could have been it. So my second one also wants nothing to do with ice. So you may be onto something there. But I'm saying Pidgeot is banned. So let's go with Swellow. Nice. I'm, I'm reaching way down there with this one. But look at its moveset. Wing Attack, Aerial Ace, Brave Bird. This is just a different version of Pidgeot. Um, there's not a ton that resists flying damage here when, when you think about it. There's no electric. All electrics are banned. Um, very few steals other than Empoleon. Although I'll talk about that in a second. And um, uh, rock. I mean, there's hardly any rock here. And who's going to run a lot of rock in a meta full of water? I mean, you, I can't imagine you're going to see a lot of, you know, rock boys in this. Um, so Swellow, like anything with Brave Bird, obviously part of it is about the timing. When do you throw it? When do you hold it? When do you try and bait? But if you play it right, other than ice and maybe a couple of other things here, there's really nothing that it cannot tangle with. Um, and even Empoleon, it beats. Uh, it does not beat, let's see, let me make sure I get this right. It doesn't beat regular, but it, or no, it loses to Shadow, but it beats regular Empoleon. Even with all flying moves, wow, all resisted, okay. Brave Bird is just that ridiculous. If you land one at the end, it can take down even Empoleon. So do you so, have to land the Brave Bird in order to win that matchup? Or can you just go one, straight yes. Aerial Ace? Okay. Yeah, okay. Aerial Ace against res Steel being resisted is, right. is just too much to overcome. But you land a Brave Bird on that, you win that. Excellent. And so many other matchups. Um, flying is, is just good here because there's basically nothing that resists it. So having something with all flying moves, usually scary in this meta, it's actually pretty good. I was, the minute Pidgeot was out, I was like, Mandibuzz, Noctowl, yep. didn't even think about Swellow because it's never been able to play. It's right. never had that access to it. And that's, again, why we love these solo metas, these individual metas, because you're like, oh, there are other Pokemon to play with out here. Yep. Um, I do have a question for you. Did you get on the phone with Hurricane Kaz and talk this through because these are all bird typings and i'm pretty sure she's manipulated you into getting another set of bird typings out here well i i don't want to talk about the the uh, payments i've been receiving in the mail so we'll, we'll leave <laughs> wall rain was yeah, going to come up and play um mm -hmm. i think wall rain when i saw the meta and you see all this you don't even think about it it wasn't until I actually practiced battled that I saw that flying dragon was going to be a thing. And then I looked at it, I was like, oh, dark dragon are allowed and water dragon. Maybe this ice typing, cause it's one of the only things that could work against flying as well, might come into play here. Really hyped on wall rain. Not only am I hyped on it with the powder snow and ice school spear, but it has earthquake. So you can put that pressure down on Empoleon. It has water pulse now and water pulse buff too could actually be really good. If you want to play it out like that, if you don't need something to take out the Empoleon, you find out that wall rain is just seeing all sorts of water or other kind of Pokemon earthquake might not be needed. Um, in the check that I would, and I'm going to tell y'all to go with the normal typing and here's why because in the in the shielding situation the normal actually wins and plays out better than the shadow version uh it gets in the one shield it gets 20 wins nine losses in one tie as a normal typing with the shadow typing it has 16 wins and 13 losses so huge difference there when it comes down to shadow and non-shadow pokemon for when it for wall rain type that's why i'm gonna go with that um and then it's bulky i love the bulk come on y'all gonna throw stuff at us i will soak it up this is a non-dark bulk pokemon which is something that hasn't really been seen in any of these other flyers and any of these other water types there's not really a tank right they banned the wish cash they banned the toxapex the next tank you're looking at here is probably wall rain in the water or dugong so um i'm not a fan of dugong if you're a fan of dugong by all means go dugong 
but I'd rather have that powder snow. I'd rather have that icicle spear. Yeah. Also, I'm curious how Celia would play as well as pre-evolution, having that body slam accessibility as well. I love Shadow Celio. I, I, I absolutely love it from, from the earlier uh, Sylph days. Actually, I guess not super early Sylph, my earlier Sylph days. Uh, some of the beginning meds I played in. I love that thing. Same meta, the timeless meta. This battler, the uh, the nut, all the way in the UK, came out with a Celio Kingdra Dragonair lineup, and he called it. Oh my God, what did he call it? J uh, JRE, do you remember what he called it? It was so. I know the one you're talking about, though. I can't remember the name. I used it. It was so busted. Celio was such a monster. And, like, the body slam spam was so good. Yeah. Before Ice School Spear came on for Wall Rain, like, Celio was the way to go. So, yeah. uh, but, yo, that that matchup, I mean, you could do that here. Celio Double Dragon, Wall Rain Double Dragon. Yeah. Um, I would even say you could go Umbreon or Empoleon Double Dragon as well and have yourself a good time in this lineup. I don't really know how Swellow plays out, so I can't oh. can't speak for Swellow. Or you can go classic line with you know the uh, Empoleon or Umbreon and Double Charm. Double who's, Charm. Who's the second Charmer? Yep, I don't, know, I, haven't looked, I, I haven't looked yet, but um, <laughs> they're probably, I hope there's one. I love Charm. <laughs> Uh, is there a dark, is there a dark typer that has charm? No. Is there a flyer that learns charm? Yes. Um, uh, nope, but that's a fairy typing. Uh, actually there is a, there is a dark type that has charm. Doesn't oh, it, me, uh, oh, li 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 Lightheart. Lightheart? Yeah. yeah. Oh, <laughs> I, I can, I can confirm that no matter however you play that thing, it is bad. <laughs> <laughs> it is bad. I've tried it so many times. It is bad. Yeah. It's so weak. And the minute you start bringing oh. in that double, oh. double charmer, I'm bringing in Golduck. I'm bringing there, it in. I'll wipe away that poison. Okay, What's there up? is one. It's a, it's a, there's a second dark type. Uh, Meowskarada has charm. That's oh, really? right. <laughs> <laughs> what go. what other move sets does Meowskarada have besides Night Chuck? Slash, Energy Ball, Play Rough? And grass knot. So are you night kidding slash, me? Night slash charm combo. Oh, imagine boosted charms with an oh energy gosh. ball too. Like yeah. get out of here. You can do everything. Meow. We're bringing in Brion. We're bringing out Meow Scotta. Let's go. <laughs> this is what happens when you get a bunch of thrifty people up here to come up with some nifty picks. This is amazing. How do you feel about your core picks? So using these two here, uh, one reason I actually settled on Swellow is it and Empoleon actually cover each other surprisingly well. Um, the, let's see, I had it up a second ago. Sorry, hang on. Um, about the only things you really have to worry about that they can't cover would be potentially that wall rain uh, if the earthquake lands. Mm -hmm. um, and then something like Quagsire, who we haven't really talked about yet. So you were mentioning yeah. earlier the Whizcash being out. Swampert doesn't look so great, but Quagsire could be a little dangerous with that Stone Edge to handle the Flyers. Mm -hmm. It could be a little scary here. But other than that, they cover each other surprisingly well. There's not really any big gaps other than those couple of gray areas there. Yeah, you just get yourself a Grass Pokemon in your set. Right. <laughs> wonderful, yeah, wonderful. Maybe. Brown Baller, what about your two picks? I mean, what I'm seeing here is I'm struggling to find Empoleon counters. The more I'm looking, mm -hmm. the more I'm watching this come, the, get this video just progress, I'm like, man, this Empoleon looks strong. I'm like, mm -hmm. okay, how do, how do I beat this thing? Uh, yeah. That thing's tough to beat. Uh, right now, the best matchup I'm seeing to beat it is Umbreon. So uh, <laughs> I'm pretty sure I'm gonna go Umbreon and Empoleon because if you can't beat it, Nobody else is going to be there. There you go. Yeah. So, uh, so you like your Umbreon because it handles the Empoleon and then the Dragon. Yeah. Uh, in the Empo sorry, the Empoleon and Umbreon. I'm just struggling to really beat those Pokemon. They're just so strong. Mm -hmm. Like whatever. I mean, you need. I think you need Umbreon to beat Empoleon, because like Guzzlord, you're resisting the Dragon 
the dragon tails are being resisted. Mm -hmm. Steel wings add up, and uh, guess what? The Empoleon user has two shields, and I already know where they're going to use them. They're going to proceed to two shield their Empoleon, and it's going to still be healthy, and I'm still going to have an Empoleon to deal with. Yeah. So it's either going to land Hydro Cannon, which is the one of the best, which is the best move in the game, in my right. opinion, is the best charge move in the game. So, you know, overall pound for pound, I I actually I, agree. I, yeah, I mean, <clears throat> we can have that discussion later. We can have. I yeah. agree with. I agree. It's such a heavy hitting move, but I feel like Frenzy Plant and Hydro Cannon are two of the, the two moves that just. Just are like literally neck and neck but just one less it's just five less energy i think it's that big of a difference you mm -hmm. know just they always be just put on I five think. cycles for i think for hydrocane was it six a six cycle it's six 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 four no six six well it can never go down two it can only six, go six, down five. one six six five i think it's six six five it may be six 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 five i have to double check the math um but yeah i mean it's just gonna be coming out at least 12 turns minimum uh, maximum i mean so i mean you're going to be seeing uh either hydro can or drill pack come out you both are hydro can is just an insanely amazing move drill yeah. pack is also just a great coverage move for that so it's it's going to be a problem and how do you deal with it uh i don't have an answer for you yet <laughs> <laughs> all right well my two core picks the guzzlord and the wall rain i answered this i was like i gotta take out this apoleon because i i definitely practiced with it and i was like this is a really good pokemon but i felt like it was going to be such a good pokemon that everybody's going to be responding to it so i went with these two and wall rain again because of the flying type it's an ice type that's straight up a type that counters the flying there is no electric there's barely any rock like barbarical is the only walk rock water and then there is aerodactyl which is rock flying which i don't even think could exist in this meta if all of this water is flying around right now so i'm here for the the uh wall rain and the guzzlord and these two like fill every hole of each other so well if you put an empoleon at the back end of this team I'm pretty sure you're you're taking everything. You can have as much variety to play around and rotate your line as possible. These two complement each other so well, and they cover so much, even of the counters of these Pokemon. Uh, the ice going against that grass, the gra the um, the dragon typing being so so strong against the other dragon typing as well. I'm just here for it. And eh, if Crunch debuffs, Crunch debuffs. <laughs> But those are it, gents. Um, we have said so much about this. Thank you both for joining us today. We have seen and talked about so many Pokemon. What are your last thoughts on the Rainstorm Cup here? Uh, I would say it's just, you know, it's this is an open meta. Um, that could definitely be a blessing and a curse at the same time. There's a lot of creativity that you can have, which is, in my opinion, is so is one of my favorite parts of battling is being creative it it lets you you know go through uh very sophisticated thinking and develops your battling skills you know to help you become a better battler which is fantastic and i always am in favor of that i also this is gonna be hard as well because there's some there's some strong pokemon and you know if, if you don't figure out how to deal with them they can run through you i mean We'll have to see how you know you can we find the most creative way. You know, how do you land that bait? How do you land that nuke? It's really this is gonna be a very you know, it could be a hey. wall rain. If you land that earthquake, you can send the Empoleon packing. But if mm -hmm. someone catches an earthquake on a flying type, you've just lost sixty five energy. Oh yeah. Yeah. Hugely. Yeah, yeah uh, I I, I agree. I mean, this this is this is a pretty wide open meta. Um, water is always an interesting typing, just because there's so much variety there, and dark and flying are, are pretty neutral. Uh, I mean, as far as you know, with the bands that are here, again, there's not a lot of hard counters other than maybe ice on a flying dragon. Everything has got some fight in it here. It, it, you're never really going to be blown out. Uh, mm -hmm. that I can see, which is making some of this team building hard because you got things like Empoleon. How do you counter that thing? There's no hard counter. Umbreon, how do you hard counter that? There's really nothing out there. So mm -hmm. that's both fun uh, as a battler because you're not locked in a lot of really bad matchups, 
but also makes team building really tricky. So mm. definitely a, a, a skill-based meta that, that's going to be a lot of fun to play, a lot of variety I, I can see out there on teams. And it's one of those formats that, like you said at the start of the show, shouldn't feel stagnant at the end of the month. That there's so much mm -hmm. variety here. You can build four or five different teams throughout the month if you go to multiple tournaments and have fun with all of them. Yeah. So I love that. Thank you, gentlemen, and I appreciate everybody joining us tonight on this wonderful How to Build. Uh, JRE Seawolf, appreciate all the thrifty and if you do, thank you for joining us today and giving us your two thoughts on what people should be bringing for this Rainstorm Cup. Proud, proud Baller, thank you as well for joining us and giving us your wonderful thoughts on this meta, bringing these neutral Umbreons to our advantage and maybe the main Empoleon counter for what could possibly be the Empoleon Cup. <laughs> That's going to wrap it up us for here at Pokey Battle Network. Be sure to check out JRE Seawolf and all of his amazing links and what he provides for the battlers. I'll provide those links down below in the section and Brown Baller as well with his Twitch channel and all of the amazing climbing that he does through GBL. Thank you all for watching the Pokey Battle Network. Be sure to hit like and subscribe to the channel if you're enjoying all of the Devin Corpse meta guides that we help provide you here for the network. I'm Sosa Flow, and like always, keep on battling.